Oh, Funko Pop. I didn't think we'd ever have to talk about Funko Pop ever again on the podcast, but it looks like it has finally reared its head again into our Transformer hobby. So it seems that the Funko Pop enthusiast Instagram account posted a huge list of upcoming Funko Vinyl Pop figures across the span of anime, Star Wars, Sonic the Hedgehog, even Dumb and Dumber. But it looks like Hasbro has finally returned to bringing some of their brands to the Funko Pop world. Now, keep in mind, Star Wars doesn't count as Hasbro stuff. It's something Hasbro licenses. But it looks like, you know, they're going to be bringing in their Mr. Potato Head, their uh, My Pet Monster stuff, and a few others. But most importantly, they're going to be bringing Transformers. Now, before I jump into this news, let's talk about Funko's history with the brand. Because it isn't the first time that Funko has done stuff with Transformers. Like, Funko started their humble beginnings back in 1998 with their wacky wobbler line, which pretty much was the prototype to what would be Funko Pops later. And in 2009, we actually got wacky wobbler Transformers. We got pretty much Movie Optimus, Movie Megatron, and Movie Bumblebee based off of their 2009 Revenge of the Fallen designs. And to mirror those, they also did a Wacky Wobbler, G1 Optimus Prime, G1 Megatron, and G1 Bumblebee. I actually have these three. And I bought these three way back in the day when Funko Pops weren't even a thing. Around that same time in 2009, oddly enough, Hasbro started up their Mighty Mugs line, which in a lot of ways is kind of like Hasbro being, you know, thinking ahead of the curve because Mighty Mugs really was Funko Pop before what Funko Pop was. And there was Funko Pop, excuse me, there was Mighty Mugs of Transformers, a whole line of them that went on for quite a while with con exclusives and everything. Now, when we get to 2011 and Funko Pop is now in full swing. It's made its debut. It actually kind of started in 2010 with Funko Force. But when Funko Pop really made its debut in 2011 and became this huge tour de force, a couple of years later in 2014, we'd get our very first official Funko Pop Transformers, which were all based off of the Age of Extinction stuff. There was four mainline releases, which was Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Drift, and Stinger. And then there was two uh, store exclusive versions, which was Optimus Prime with uh, in metallic, and that was a Barnes and Noble exclusive. And then Optimus Prime with the sword, with his like Energon sword, which is a Hot Topic exclusive. And that was that. That was literally it for Funko Pop for Transformers forever forever like they just didn't sell well maybe because they were movie designs but they just didn't sell well it didn't resonate with the Funko Pop collectors and Hasbro kind of stopped doing those with them we did see in 2014 the Funko Hikari line for people who aren't familiar with that line that's a high-end Sufobi Funko based line and Hikari which means light in Japanese all the figures are done in like a clear color plastic so light could shine through them and these were like super expensive. They were eight inches tall and they were sometimes retailed as high as $69.99 to $79.99 each. And they did Optimus in multiple different colors. And they did G1, and this is a G1 Optimus, excuse me, and a G1 Bumblebee in multiple different colors. I remember um, Dan Gilbazin at TFCon, I want to say 2000. 2015, he brought one that was gifted to him by Funko when he went to San Diego Comic-Con. He signed it and brought it to TFCon, and it was up for auction, and I think it went for like 40 bucks or 50 bucks, which was a really good price, all things 40 bucks Canadian, I think. Um, but yeah, so they did that Hikari line, but it was just like the G1 Optimus mold done in this like 8-inch style, non-transformable, for expensive and a, and a ton of different colors, like all the colors of the rainbow. And then they did the same thing with a G1 Bumblebee. And then after 2014, Funko did just nothing with Hasbro. They just did nothing of any of their brands, and that was that. Once in a while, you'd see some gem Funko Pops or this and that, but usually anything that was 100% owned by Hasbro didn't have Funko Pop representation and now this is rearing up now in 2020 
the last time, like, I mean, just going back to like, you know, the Mighty Mugs thing, you know, after after Funko Pop became huge, uh, Mighty Mugs tried to make its return in 2018, but they changed the gimmick where it was like this kind of spinning, swappable, almost like Blitzwing kind of head gimmick or man E faces. And I mean, we talked about it on the podcast. You could kind of like look in the, the library back at how we covered that. And, you know, it didn't really do well for Hasbro, the, trying to get in on the Funko Pop uh, popularity. But now this listing here. Let's get to this news listing now. So we have Funko Pop vinyls, meaning the standard Funko Pop of G1 Optimus Prime, G1 Megatron, G1 Bumblebee, G1 Jazz, and G1 Soundwave. No surprise on the choices there. I mean, Jazz call, kind of falls into that second tier outside of the Legendary 7, but he's that higher upper second tier with Prowl and Shockwave. So it doesn't surprise me, uh, the choices there. And then, of course, there's also going to be the Funko Pop key change, which are like the smaller versions of the large Funko Pops. And there's going to be a G1 Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Megatron, obviously based off of, you know, the the probably the molds here. And it, again, no surprise. And it's kind of funny, like, you know, the fact that the keychains, they only took three, and the three that they took go all the way back to when they did those wacky wobblers with them way back in 2009, more than 11 years ago. It's pretty clear Funko Pop knows what sells and which characters to go with from the Transformers brand. And hey, you know what? It doesn't surprise me that they're doing this, but will this be successful is the question. I mean, we've had this discussion in the past already when we were talking about Transformers R.E.D., and how non-transformable Transformer product really doesn't have an interest from most of the market. But at the same time, maybe the Funko Pop collectors will pick up the slack. They weren't interested in this movie stuff. Most, a lot of people weren't really interested in the movie stuff, let alone have Funko Pops of movie designs. But I think maybe if it's based off of G1 stuff, it just might be interesting enough to Funko Pop collectors to want to buy this. Transformer collectors? Eh, at most, I imagine what will probably happen is if you're like a big jazz fan, you might buy that one jazz figure. If you're a big Bumblebee fan, you might get that one Bumblebee figure. But in general, I don't think this is something that people are going to actively go out of their way to try to collect them all, considering how badly received the old Age of Extinction one was. And I mean, even going back to the Wacky Wobblers, I bought them, but I bought them years ago when, I mean, Funko Pop wasn't really a meme that we all made fun of in the toy community. Um, I mean, I bought it, and then Funko Pop would become a thing three years later. So it's it's something that I, I just hope this is done right, because the previous Funko Pops that we did get, again, the ones that are based off of the movie stuff, they all had those ugly, beady eyes on them. It just didn't look nice. And considering that we're having characters like Jazz that are known for their visor or same thing with Soundwave, are they going to put like their beady eyes on those characters? Because I, it's not going to look good. Like I have, I have very few fun co-pops in this house. And oddly enough, when I looked at the ones that I do have, uh, they're all characters that have shades that kind of hide those beady eyes a little bit. I have Bret Hart, I have Proto Man. And the Bret Hart one, you could kind of see the beady eyes through the shades, although they did a later edition with pink shades and you can't see it. And the Proto Man one, you can't see any eyes, beady eyes at all. So they kind of like get away with that. But these Transformer ones, you know, obviously Megatron, Bumblebee, and Optimus still have the beady eyes because they have actual eyes. But again, characters like Soundwave and Jazz, they have visors. I just hope they don't make it. At the end of the day, I don't think I'm, I'm again, I'm not going to pick these up. This isn't my jam. I didn't, I mean, I'm a Transformer completist and I didn't pick up the movie ones. You know, I picked up those wacky wobblers back in 2009 when I was like crazy hardcore completist of everything. But by 2011, I was already dialing it back on merchandising and Funko Pop was going to be the least of the things that I'd be interested in. I usually, I think the only time I ever buy Funko Pop now is if it's like a character that just doesn't have a toy. Like, I have a Funko Pop of Son of Zorn, just because I really like that show. And then, like, I think a couple of weeks after that came out, they actually made a Son of Zorn action figure. And I was like, ah, damn it. <laughs> I was like, now what am I going to do with this stupid thing? 
Uh, I love Son of Zorn. Such an underrated show. Um, but anyways, getting off topic here. But it, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. This is this is very uh, not unexpected. Cause I'm surprised it took this long, considering that it's easy money for Hasbro, because I'm pretty sure Funko was bugging them to get the Transformer license and just do every character and then do convention exclusives and store exclusives and metallic and alternate color schemes and black repaints and i mean the sky's the limit with the transformer g1 brand and all and that plethora of characters let alone if they jump into beast wars and all the other brands too but i think hasbro just kind of held off because i think maybe they felt you know what we could do this ourselves and they tried with mighty mugs and my mighty mugs didn't work out it really didn't work out for them which is a shame um, but it didn't work out for them, so they're just going to hand it off to someone else and they're going to let them have the reins. Let me know what you think about this. Is this something that you're interested in? I know it's not really me. I mean, if they make a, if they make like a fun co-pop hot rod, they're going to get me. If they make like a fun co-pop of some Beast Wars characters, they might get me. But in general, like, I don't need a fun co-pop G1 Optimus Prime or Bumblebee. It's, it's to me, it's just... It's just a waste of space, if anything. But, I mean, everyone's taste is different. Maybe it's their thing. I'm not going to judge. But for me, it's uh, it's going to be a, a pretty hard pass on a majority of this. 